What's up guys, it's your girl Haley Pro, aka The Sound Chick here. Featured for today's interview, we have the Boogie Pop Assassin. What's great about this band is that they bring entertainment back into the music scene. Very similar to that of Slipknot, Marilyn Manson, or Kiss. During our interview, we talk about how this hard rock band has been doing recently, their latest project titled Tears of Gasoline, what more they've been up to, and some exciting news regarding them getting signed to a label. So if you dig interesting bands that are in the hard rock scene, definitely keep on listening to this interview. You don't want to miss it. Hi, this is the Boogie Pop Assassin, and we are here with the Sound Chick. Getting right into it here, let's talk about some of the other members in the Boogie Pop Assassin. How did you guys all come together to uh, form this band? Well, I, it kind of started as a solo project for me a long time ago. I was kind of by myself for years. It took me probably about three years just uh, to save up enough to get a guitar. Um, to make a long story short, uh, I started writing some songs. Finally graduated up to my electric and amplifier, and uh, I looked for some band members, and I played with a couple of guys for about, uh, on and off for about three years, you know, uh, working on uh, some of the Tears of Gasoline album stuff, and uh, uh, those guys kind of didn't work out, and later on, I had uh, uh, run up on um, a guy through Craigslist called... uh, Jim Passini, we call him Je- uh, Jim the Hitman Passini now. Uh, so uh, me and him teamed up, and uh, we were together for uh, quite a bit. And um, we was going through a lot of different drummers, a uh, few uh, other lead guitar players, and uh, we just had a, a, a time and a half of uh, you know finding a, a right drummer or musician that uh, would actually uh, be dedicated to anything. But we stuck in there. We hung in there. And uh, I guess uh, maybe around a year or more ago, uh, we, uh, Jim kind of knew him from the past anyway. Uh, We found a guy, uh, David Watson. uh, We call him uh, Doc or Doc the Mangler Watson on drums. And uh, he um, he, uh, he showed up. I kind of dug his sound. It seemed like like he had our, our style of playing. And uh, hit, we hit it off good. He he's a great drummer. He's reliable, uh, like Jim. And uh, you know, a friend of ours, uh, by the name of uh, Jeff Carl Lawrence, he he lets us uh, play at uh, his place, and he does the sound and the lights and everything like that. So uh, um, that's just it, it. Took a long time to find the the right people, but uh, yeah, uh, I finally got them. That's awesome. I'm glad that you know that you found the perfect uh, members and uh, right fit for this project here. It's really cool and awesome. I heard you mention um, Tears of Gasoline, so we're just gonna get right into that. You know, you released Tears of Gasoline in 2019. For those who haven't had the chance to listen to it yet, what can they expect from, you know, the tracks off this album? Pandemonium and Chaos. (laughs) (laughs) Well, when I actually, when I wrote Tears of Gasoline, I wrote that a long, long time ago. Uh, I wrote many songs since then. Uh, When I wrote uh, that album, uh, of course, you know, I play hard rock, you know. uh, But I wanted to be a little bit versatile on my songwriting. I wanted uh, some of it to be kind of hard rock, but I wanted, uh, as a songwriter, I wanted uh, to put in some uh, more of... uh, I don't want to say it's not soft rock. I don't know what you would actually even call my music. It's, it's rock, but I wanted to be versatile on that to show uh, uh, my uh, versatility as a songwriter, you know. So, uh, but I think uh, I think it's got a little bit for uh, something for everybody. I know I've had a lot of people come up to me and say they really uh, dug the meaning behind one of my songs or. Uh, I've had bikers that say they like to uh, uh, crank some of my music up while they're riding. You know, uh, uh, it's uh, it's you know it's that hard rock. It's got the beat and everything to it. So uh, it, it, it's a good album. It's it's worth a listen. You know, 
but uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be in the studio in January, and it's only going to get better. Awesome. I am stoked to hear, you know, new releases from you. Um, I listened to Tears of Gasoline and absolutely loved it. It was awesome. I liked all of the different, you know, styles and sounds incorporated to like into each and every track. It was really unique and I, you know, really enjoyed listening to it. It it had a lot of good meaning behind it, for sure. You know, talking about your music, who would you say are your core influences? Oh, well, I've got a... Well, you know, I, I play hard rock. I'm not exactly uh, death metal, but uh, I play real hard rock. But I've got a lot of, uh, it, it's very versatile. I mean, I like uh, uh, anywhere from, uh, you know, uh, Pink Floyd to uh, uh, Motorhead uh, to uh, some Molly Crude, uh, uh, Godsmack, Alice in Chains, uh, Alice Cooper. You know, he was a big influence for anything from the, the, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s uh, to today. You know, that rock hard, I like it. Uh, and sometimes uh, it's not so much the uh, aggressive hard rock nature of a song. It's uh, the melodic value of, uh, of a song that I have got from all these artists over the years. Uh, I do know that uh, as a songwriter, I try really hard. Uh, I mean, I, I want to rock hard, but I like to try to put some, uh, uh, some type of melodic uh, value in there, uh, some type of chorus that will stick in people's heads as well. Uh, so I've been, been influenced by uh, not just one genre of rock, but a great many, I guess you would say. I like that. I think that it's really important and necessary for musicians to have a wide range and eclectic music taste. Because, you know, to be successful in the music scene right now, you want to be as versatile as possible and what better way to do that than take from you know artists from many genres and make that into your own unique style so i think that that's right on point for a musician you know being a musician is a lot of work it's definitely you know a unique business and career path to get into what would you say is that moment for you that made you realize you wanted to uh, make music Oh, man, that, uh, yeah, I remember that very well. Uh, uh, well, I was, a, I was a young a young man, and uh, I remember I was always a weird kid that got into bizarre, odd things, you know. Um, got in a lot of trouble at school uh, for that, but uh, I remember I'd been listening to music. Uh, it was in the 70s, and uh, they had the, they, they played the worst music on the radio you, you ever heard in your life. But some of the music I knew I liked, but it just, I, I, it was like they was a void there. And uh, it, it's just like, I, I don't know, it's, I was empty. And uh, I remember I was on the school bus, uh, and I heard these kids talking about uh, some band called Kiss. I said they wore makeup and they spit blood and they, they, you know, would shoot fire out of their mouth. And, well, that, you know, as a very young man, that had me intrigued. And, uh, well, you know, then if you wanted to hear uh, a, an artist, you had to buy the album, you know. Right. It wasn't always on the radio. We didn't have, uh, you know, any type of uh, internet to get on. So uh, I thought, well, I'm going to go uh, to the store and I'm going to buy one of these Kiss albums. And uh, check them out. And uh, I remember I had uh, taken it home. I put the needle in the groove. I had never heard hard rock before. And uh, I would say about the, uh, I, I listened to it. I, I think the song was uh, I Want You by Kids on the Rock and Roll Over album. And um, I remember within the, the first 35 seconds, I was just mesmerized. I was spellbound. I was electrified. It was uh, just something awesome. It hit me like a ton, ton of bricks. Uh, I had never, ever heard anything like that. It just, that, I think that was my actual first time that I actually fell in love. Uh, and that's when I knew that I wanted to, I guess, become a rock musician someday. And uh, I just kind of uh, pursued that ever since. But that love has always uh, been there and that passion. So I guess... Uh, I guess that's how that that all came about. That's awesome. I mean, I love that story. You know, it's absolutely awesome that you were inspired by these major artists who kind of paved the way for what music should sound like. 
yeah. Yeah. So, you know, musicians do a lot of interesting and some might say, you know, crazy things compared to, you know, your average person. But would you say you've done any crazy things in the name of music? That reminds me of a story. I guess the statutes of limitations are up anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was, uh, I, I don't know how honorable this is, but uh, I remember when I was uh, when I was a kid, uh, I think our maiden had just came out uh, uh, and that, with their number of the beast thing, and they was getting promoted really heavy, and uh, they had a autograph signing uh, at the at the mall. Uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, where I'm from, I, you know, I'm from the Knoxville, uh, Tennessee, in Lenore City, Tennessee area, but uh, this was in Knoxville, and uh, I remember the whole place was packed, you know, elbow to elbow, and back then they sold the uh, uh, record albums uh, for the young people who don't know what they are, they're like a CD, except they're a lot bigger, <laughs> and they won't fit in your computer, so <laughs> I... Uh, I remember, I don't know, I was, uh, I mean, it was just elbow to elbow. It was like a rock concert waiting to get an autograph from these guys. And uh, just so happened, uh, I was there by the thing, and there was the Iron Maiden albums in that section. And I was looking around, and I thought, well, why not? So I took one of the uh, Iron Maiden albums, and uh, I kind of took my fingernail and went down the uh, the plastic of it, and I took the uh, plastic off of it, you know, uh, with a price tag and everything, and I just uh, went up there to Iron Maiden themselves, and I had them autograph an album of theirs that I had just stolen. So, <laughs> uh, I, 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 now don't, I wouldn't suggest people do that, but, you know, I was young, and... Um, Let's see, uh, I've, I've done other things too, but uh, I, there's just so many things I don't, I don't really know, um, you know, it, uh, I just have to think about it and probably decide what would, uh, you know, get me in more trouble than not anyway, <laughs> so but that, that's one thing that comes to mind, I guess. Right. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, it sounds worth it in the end, um, that's for sure. Well, you gotta remember, I was just a kid when I'd done this show, right. you know. Absolutely right. Um, let's go back and talk about, you know, two of your tracks. You've got um, Tears of Gasoline and Paper Flowers. What can yeah. you say is the the meaning behind these two tracks? Uh, well, Tears of Gasoline, that's uh, kind of a complex little song there. Uh, Tears of Gasoline is basically about, um, I guess, the state of the fair. I've been asked that question, too, and it's... Uh, not an easy one to answer. It's just uh, uh, basically in society that we live in, um, I think, uh, you know, you have a, a big power a government uh, government there and then people actually behind the government and uh, they have found that if they can divide the people uh, to fight against one another, they can conquer us, you know. Right. And... Um, uh, kind of, um, yeah, you know, uh, people who, you know, want uh, a fair shake and equality and everything uh, for people uh, and a, a fair and just nation like uh, John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr., uh, when they go out and they do that, uh, uh, our government murders them. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's uh, the biggest thing, the biggest way a lot of people... Uh, want to fight the government and uh, don't get me wrong uh, uh, I'm not anti-government I am anti most of the government I think we can do away with a good uh, oh 80% of them and their rules and just have uh, the government do what they're supposed to do and govern them own selves as opposed to governing us the, a government is not supposed to govern us their job is to govern themselves, basically. But the biggest thing, the biggest threat to the government is when people start getting along with one another. That's what they're afraid of the most. And if you want to scare the hell out of them, 
uh, let uh, let every American start uh, walking together, and uh, that that's that's what will take a government down real quick. And that's uh, kind of the ideology I had in mind. Uh, that and uh, just uh, a lot of different things that tied in with tears of gasoline, you know. So right, I can I can definitely see the motivation behind tears of gasoline for sure. Um, what would you say is the you know intention or meaning behind paper flowers? Oh, God. Paper flowers. Oh, Lord. Well, you know, you got a paper flowers is, uh, that was a fictitious love song. Um, and, you know, in reality, I don't write love songs. Uh, to me, as an artist, you know, if other people want to do it, that's fine. That's their business. There's nothing wrong with that. But to me, a uh, love song would, uh, uh, that would just uh, cheapen and, and uh, degrade my own self. Uh, I think uh, the you young know, people can think it sounds bad they want. I think it's, I think they're silly. You know, uh, to, to me, a love song is a novelty. Uh, you know, I can go to a, a cheap-ass dime store uh, souvenir shop and get a novelty. You know, um, to me, you know, what love is, is uh, when two people, you know, uh, fall in love with one another. You know, that feeling is so deep and it's so strong. You know, that... And that alone is music. That is a song within itself. How in the hell can I duplicate that? I can't, you know. Um, So uh, I think a love song to me is uh, is the real thing. I I can't I can't duplicate it with a guitar. I can't duplicate that feeling uh, with words. So Paper Flowers was kind of a a fictitious song that I've written about. uh, if you'll listen to the words, uh, it's kind of like somebody uh, reading a letter uh, to a woman. And uh, I guess uh, talking about, uh, you know, the memories that they had long ago. Uh, but in the end, you realize that it's actually just a letter. And uh, uh, the person uh, that uh, he was in love with uh, at one time has died. So it's mm-hmm. kind of a... Uh, Right. I love that. I love that, you know, you you say that you can't duplicate the real thing with music and a guitar. Um, that's really interesting. Um, and I, 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 I find I can duplicate anger very well with my music. Too. <laughs> right. I like that. Right. Absolutely. For sure. Um, you know, let's talk about something pretty exciting for you. You're signed with Misanthropic Records. That's awesome. That's a major milestone for, you know, artists and bands. How did this signing come to be? Well, there's a little bit of a backstory to that, too. You, you got to remember where I come from. Um, you know, uh, when I grew up, I didn't grow up uh, in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. I grew up in... Uh, you know, I grew up with con artists, hustlers, rapists, murderers, you name name it. You know, I've, I've uh, lived in that when I was incarcerated. I've been on the street and had to live with that growing up. Uh, that wasn't a, uh, that's, that's not a, a, a badge of honor I should carry, but it's just the truth. So, needless to say, when I grow up, uh, get older, uh, settle down, uh, I find getting in the music, music industry, there's just as many uh, con artists and hustlers as there is in prisons and on the streets, you know. So I was very, uh, well, you know, the music industry, only mm-hmm. you, you can't trust about 80% of them, you know. Uh, so it's a very, very cutthroat business. And uh, I just got into it with uh, two labels uh, before before I uh, talked to Eric uh, from the record, from, you know, Mrs. Scott Records, I had talked to two other labels, and basically they were just wanting to uh, uh, take away my creative freedoms. Uh, I'm the guy you don't want to control. That, that, that's a bad thing. I will turn on you I, like a rampant dog. They wanted to take away my creative control. Other companies, they just wanted the, uh, the copyrights and the licensing rights of my songs. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not a genius, but I'm pretty street smart. Uh, a lot of these labels that had approached me were, were not who they said they were. So uh, at the time that I began dealing with uh, Memphis Records, 
uh, I wasn't even wanting a, 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 a record contract, you know. But uh, what happened was I had I'd seen an ad or something. I don't even think Eric knows this story, but I'd seen an ad or something about that, and I thought, eh, you know, maybe I'll send them uh, some of these songs to listen to, see if they want to listen to them, and they can give them uh, give me a critique on them or whatever. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, I didn't really whatever they said, they liked them, they liked them, they didn't, they didn't. I wasn't going to lose no sleep, you know. But uh, while I was, uh, before they had written back, I started reading more into this label, you know. Uh, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. Uh, these are the things I've been kind of looking for anyway. And I just got more interested in it and uh, because they were a lot different than the uh, labels that I had been dealing with before. And I'm thinking, well... But I'm still skeptical, you know what I mean? Right. But it did get me intrigued, and then I, I started thinking about it, like, yeah, this would be nice. It's, you know, this would make things a, a heck of a lot easier on me. So uh, anyway, they, uh, Eric had, um, I believe, uh, he'd written back and said, well, I like your songs. He said, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to talk to you. You know, said that in a, I guess, an email or a message or something. I thought to myself, yeah, I'd like to talk to you too, because I'm wanting to find out what the game is. You know, right. uh, if there's something there, I'm going to find it. You know, I've been around the block and back. I'll find out what's up. You know, <laughs> and uh, I talked to Eric, and uh, you know, I can read people on, on uh, you know, how genuine they are. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people that uh, if they if they want to sucker you out of something, they'll tell you how wonderful you are and how great you are. Uh, but he wasn't doing that, and he wasn't promising. He didn't promise me. He wasn't going to give me that whole world, anything I wanted. Uh, but he told me what he could give and what he couldn't do, and all this. And that's the sign of an honest person. So uh, naturally, I started looking more into uh, Mississippi Records, and uh, I thought, well, well, yeah. And I talked to my band bandmates about it as well, and uh, th I said, I think uh, we should think about this seriously because i think this guy's legit and um so we uh of course you know we went over the contract i, I made i made darn sure that i had uh, uh you know a lawyer and a, another paralegal look it over and uh it was everything we wanted there was no uh there was no uh, trickery in that and i thought yeah and plus they're gonna do this for us and that for us and everything so we decided to uh, to sign and uh, uh, I guess that would uh, probably lead up into the question how, how things have been going with the label. Uh, uh, the, the day after we signed, uh, we started getting gigs. <laughs> and I'm going, like, whoa, slow down now. Hang on. So uh, Mississippi Records have, uh, so far, they've been great. They have uh, not only done what they said they were going to do, they've done even more. And... Uh, so far, it's, it's been great working with them. I've always uh, kind of dreamed of uh, being with uh, some type of label or something that I, I could be more of a family with as opposed to somebody I'm fighting all the time, you know, and uh, they're just they're just real good to work with, you know. Absolutely. I love that. Um, I love that, you know, this label has brought a lot of opportunities for you and that they've, you know, exceeded those expectations. That's really awesome. And I hope that it continues to work that way for um, the Boogie Pop Assassin. That's really exciting. And, you know, we're, we're happy to have you a part of this family. It's, it really is um, a very welcoming and loving environment to be in. So, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, as we're approaching the new year here, what would you say are some future goals that you have for the band and, you know, your music career? Well, in January, uh, we're scheduled to, uh, of course, uh, the label has done got its shows already, you know, and uh, that came, I got overwhelmed with that. And, oh, I'd, uh, I'd, I got what I wanted in big time, so... Uh, but we're scheduled to do uh, start some recording in January. Uh, I, we have got some new songs that really rock. Uh, if you kind of like the Tears of Gasoline album, yeah, you just you just wait till this new album comes out. It, it's going to be great. I've had nothing but time 
uh, to work uh, hard on these songs, and uh, I make sure it rocks hard too. It, it, uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. So we start recording in January. Uh, I think we go on tour in February. We'll be uh, uh, hopefully uh, starting our tour in February in uh, in Illinois. Uh, I think it's somewhere past Chicago at a, the Terminus Club or somewhere like that. Uh, so we're going to be going on different tours in different places. Uh, as far as my stage show goes, uh, I'm just going to be building up and building up and building up uh, to the point to where it's, uh, you know, you're not just going to see a band there, you know, uh, playing. You're going to see some guys in costumes or whatever with some kind of weird look uh with uh hopefully the laser lights uh light show and uh actual uh full-blown stage production even at a uh, the smaller venues and clubs uh because we're trying to set uh, our set aside and uh, uh just uh really just try to give people a good show so we got a lot of plans uh for the future and that and uh the label's helping us out with that uh, uh eric's been helping us out with a lot of things and uh it's it's just uh, just just look out for the music, and uh, we're going to be doing videos as well. There's you no, know, of course, you know, they're going to got merchandise uh, too. But there's just a lot of things going on with us, and we're excited about every bit of it. That is awesome. I'm so excited um, for what the future has in store for uh, the Boogie Pop Assassin. Um, I'm super also excited and kind of jealous about the fact that you're going to be playing in Chicago. Um, I've seen a few shows. No, it's outside. It's about 50 miles from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen a few shows at at the uh, at the Terminus venue, and it's yeah. they're really good. Um, you guys will have a lot of fun, I'm sure. Yeah, well, well we hope they got a good sound system. That's, you know. Oh yeah, they do. Um, I promise you, it's gonna be a good experience. <laughs> I promise. Um, you know, before we close out here do you have any more comments or thoughts you'd like to share for the listeners um uh, yeah i've probably got several things um you know a lot of people ask me well just who who is a boogie pop assassin you know and um you know just what are you about you know because i got this weird image and yeah i tell them who the hell do you want me to be you want me to be the boogeyman i'll be the damn boogeyman for you you know you want me to you, you want me to be the hippie? I can be the hippie. You want me to be the lover, the Romeo, the rock star? What, what is it you want? You know, just what do you want out of me? But uh, I think an answer to that question, you really, uh, to find out who the Boogie Pop Assassin is, you really have to listen to the music. Uh, when I was writing this song, and I've done this on purpose, uh, I put, uh, I put uh, strategically, I guess, put parts of myself in there. And, um, and uh, as well as uh, some messages and symbolisms that are within the music. Uh, but the only way you can ever figure that out is you've got to listen to it. you got to listen to the music. you got to listen to the words uh, uh, to find that out, to figure it out, you know. Hey guys, it's the sound check here again. I hope you enjoyed the interview with the Boogie Pop Assassin, and I hope it persuaded you enough to go check out their latest project, Tears of Gasoline. My personal favorite tracks off this project are Paper Flowers and the title track, Tears of Gasoline. Go and check it out for yourself. I promise you won't regret it. I enjoyed having you on this broadcast, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by the interview subject belong solely to themselves and not necessarily the sound chick or its sponsors. We thank you for tuning in and look forward to seeing you on the next broadcast. If you're interested in reading up more of my interviews or music reviews that I do, follow me on my social media on Twitter or Instagram at Real Sound Chick. This is a great place to see all of my updates, so definitely check it out there. In the meantime, rock on my dudes.